Well, we're coming to you live from the Capitol Hotel in Sandton, where we are anticipating interviews with the upcoming candidates for the Chief Justice position. There are four candidates who are going to be interviewed throughout the week. And the first candidate is um, Judge Justice Mwisele Madlanga, who will be interviewed throughout the course of today. Now, I have a guest with me just to unpack uh, what we're expecting to um, have happen here today. Um, we say, uh, sorry, Mbege Zeli Benjamin. The names are tripping me up a little bit here this morning. Um, he's a researcher at Judges Matter. Good morning, Mbege Zeli, and thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, a big day for the judiciary and a big day for analysts like yourself who watch the judiciary on a regular basis. Um, now, we know that the four candidates who are vying for this position have very different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the standout things that the Judicial Service Commission should be looking for when uh, trying to appoint a Chief Justice candidate? Well, the first thing, Diane, is that the, the job of Chief Justice is primarily a judge of the Constitutional Court. So that means you are expected to deliver high-quality, impactful judgments that shape the law. So the first thing is to look, that the JC must look for is that intellectual prowess, is that intellectual depth from the candidate. Secondly, the job of the uh, Chief Justice is to be a leader, leader in the judiciary, but also lead the systems in the judiciary to work as best as they should. Mm -hmm. So leadership is a second one. Administrative ability is a component of, of leadership. Mm -hmm. So he or she must be able to administer the systems in the judiciary. Right now we're sitting at the Judicial Service Commission. The Judicial Service Commission is chaired by the Chief Justice, so he must make sure that it, it delivers on his primary job, which is to appoint judges and hold them accountable for misconduct. And then there are other, I think, softer skills and softer issues that the J uh, JSC should be looking for, uh, looking uh, for in the Chief Justice. One of which is communication. The Chief Justice must be able to speak um, confidently for and on behalf of the judiciary and speak in defence where the judiciary is under threat. Yeah. But most importantly, the Chief Justice must be able to articulate the values of the Constitution, including rule of, the rule of law, equality, dignity and freedom. So the issue of leadership obviously is going to come up here because the Chief Justice, as you said, leads the Constitutional Court but also leads the judiciary as a whole. Um, now the candidate that we have today is not one who's necessarily had a leadership position within the, the, the bench thus far. Do you think that's going to count against uh, Justice Madlanga compared to other candidates um, like uh, Judge Johnson Lango, Lambo or Acting Chief Justice uh, uh, Raymond Zondo? So you're quite correct. Uh, Justice Madlanga has not held a formal leadership position in the judiciary, but he has led in different ways, and I think this might be something that will be teased out in the interviews. Um, the, uh, the General Counsel of the Bar, which represents advocates, they look at some of the judgments that he has penned over the last couple of years. And they found that the majority of those judgments um, were with the full concurrence of, the, of his colleagues, some of whom are more senior than him. Um, so he was able to bring them along to his vision and to his view of the law. Mm. That's important because that means that he can foster collegiality, he's able to lead his colleagues towards a common vision, he's able to uh, uh, make sure that the constitutional court coheres around an understanding of, of the law. But of course, leadership comes with that administrative ability, but, and because of he lacks that formal leadership experience, mm. that might be a drawback which might count against him. But interesting that you're mentioning his judgments because it does seem that he has given a number of strong judgments over the past few years and of course as the as a potential chief justice that is something that will be unpacked here do you think that his his judgments stand him in good stead um, um, when it comes to this interview process I think the quality of his judgments and the impact that they've made on the law is one thing that stands him head, of, head and shoulders above the other candidates. Mm. Um, he's known as, uh, well, he's regarded widely that as the intellectual leader of the Constitutional Court. Mm. Some of his judgments um, have had a real-life impact, especially on women. About a month ago, he handed down a judgment which found that um, same-sex, I mean, uh, opposite-sex uh, life partners in long-term partnerships mm. are entitled to some sort of maintenance and some sort of inheritance when they come out of um, long-term relationships, when mm. one of the partners dies. 
that's an important uh, um, uh, judgment because there are many, many millions of women who live in those uh, uh, long-term life partnerships. Yes. And for the most part, when they are, the partner dies, they are usually kicked out onto the street. Mm -hmm. And so now at least they have a little bit more protection. Well, that's very important points that you are raising here. Now we're going to have a full day, obviously, of argument. Well, not argument, but <laughs> of, uh, there might actually be some argument, mm, actually, mm. of some interviews here. And and oftentimes the Judicial Service Commission does get quite spicy um, when it comes to some of the questions that are that are answered or asked here. Are there any uh, skeletons that you might we might see popping up in terms of Justice Matlanga? Well, not. Not many that I know, um, but I think because of the uh, issue of the lack of criteria in the JSC, it's a little bit unpredictable what kind of questions that they will ask. And so you might find uh, shockers during the course of the interview, mm. and, and, and perhaps some of them will be relevant, and I hope that many of them are relevant. And the, the, the JSC focuses on only on those relevant issues and leave the sideshows for now. Well, that, that's something that Judges Matter has motivated for over time, that they should actually be some kind of set criteria. At the moment, the process is, is pretty much open-ended. Uh, commissioners can ask whatever they, they, they feel necessary, whether it's about the transformation of the judiciary or whether it's about, um, you know, something happening in, the, in a judge's private life. Mm. Do you think that um, this is another opportunity where opportunity missed in a way from the JSC without coming with some criteria before these inter interviews took place? Well, I don't think the JSC has missed the opportunity as yet. Um, as you know, they are meeting right now, in fact, and that meeting will end just before the interview for Justice Mazlanga starts. We, we hope that coming out of that meeting, they'll come up with something in the form of a criteria because that will be important to guide the, this interview for today and the rest that will follow mm. in the week. But I think more importantly is that the criteria will also tell us what kind of issues and what kind of uh, um, qualities are important and that the JSC will take into account when they take their decision. So that is something that we have been pushing for many, many years and we hope that the, the JSC will finally come around. All right. Well, those are some key issues there that are up for consideration as these interviews kick off today. Uh, Justice Mbuiseli Madlanga, the first candidate uh, in the hot seat today. The JSC is expected to have a meeting for about an hour before the interview actually begins at around 10 o'clock. And we'll be bringing you highlights and updates on the process throughout the day.